Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Bird Day Warrior here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister and brother. Happy Preparation Day, and this is the day that you get ready for the Sabbath. Remember, according to the Bible, in Exodus uh, 20, verses 8 through 11, it talks about the Sabbath day, to remember the Sabbath day. However, this is the day before the Sabbath. So this is the day that people get their food ready, they get their clothes ready if they're going to church, out, iron, shoes, polish, and all that stuff. And this is the day that God gave us to, to put aside to, to start preparing for the Sabbath. But most people I know start on Sunday, like from one Sunday and then Friday they don't have much to do. So it's like you get ready, like for instance, to, like I said, tonight from Sabbath, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, right? And then when sundown tomorrow, some people already start getting ready for the next week for Sabbath. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So it's a day, remember God gave us six days to do what we want to do, but he asks us for one day and that's the Sabbath and it always been and forever will be Saturday. It was never Sunday and there's no scripture that you can find that will state that. Okay, so just remember the Sabbath is a 24 hour cycle according to the Bible, according to the Bible. So we are filled with the Spirit, and this is E shall receive power. Well, I didn't say my name right, so this is Birdell Warrior, and thank you so much for supporting my ministry. And if you would like to continue, you can go to bit.ly backslash spiritual warfare 21 and also bit.ly backslash number 15. Compelling Reasons 2021, and would, if you would like to tell your story, you can also go to bit.ly, tell your story 2022. So let's get into fill with the Spirit, but before we go, I we normally pray. So Father God, I ask you, Father God, first, uh, first of all, Father God, I thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to see another preparation day, Father God. Father God, we give you praise, we give you honor. So Father God, right now, I ask you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I'm a little bit earlier this morning. I got uh, many things to do. So here we go. Filled with the Spirit and stayed here. And disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And this is coming from Acts chapter 13, verses 52. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to continue to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it state here, the work of the Holy Spirit is immeasurably great. It is from this source that the power and the efficiency comes to the workers for God. And the Holy Spirit is a comforter as the personal presence of Christ to the soul. He who looks to Christ is in simple Childlike faith is made a partakers of the divine nature through the agency of the Holy Spirit. When led by the Spirit of God, the Christian may know that he is made complete in him, who is the head of all things. As Christ was glorified on the day of Pentecost, so will he again be glorified in the closing work of the gospel. When he shall prepare the people to stand the final test in the closing conflict of the great controversy. And remember, that's another book I told you about that. Every home should have this book and reading it. And it's the great controversy. And you can find that um, on YouTube. And you can also find it in, uh, it's an app that you can download. And it's uh, LNG White uh, Writings. Uh, you can find that book there and you can, once you uh, find that particular app, you can download it and you can have the book, uh, you can read, the, the book can be read to you. What I mean that you can either uh, read it to yourself or there's a, um, um, what do you say, there's a video that you can press and then it reads, it reads the book to you. So it stayed here. When the earth is lightened with the glory of God, we shall see a work similar to that which was wrought when the disciples, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaimed the power of a risen Savior. 
The light of heaven penetrates the darkness, the darkened mind of those who have been deceived by the enemies of Christ, and the false representation of him was rejected, for through the power of the Holy Spirit, they now saw him exalted to be a prince and savior, to give repentance unto Israel and remissions of sin. Christ was glorified through the power of the Holy Spirit resting upon men. The revelation of Christ by the Holy Spirit brought to them a realizing sense of his power and majesty, and they stretched forth their hand unto him by faith, saying, I believe. Thus it was in the time of the early rain, but the latter rain will be more abundant. The Savior of man will be glorified, and the earth will be lightened with the bright shining of the beam of his righteousness. He is the fountain of light, and the light from the gate ajar has been shining upon the people of God, that they may lift him up in his glorious character before those who sit in darkness. So that concludes my devotion, my sister, my brother, filled with the Spirit. And as I was doing my devotion, I was going to do, remember yesterday we talked about uh, reverence. We don't have enough reverence for God. And we talked about when we're praying, we need, you know, especially in, in public, uh, when the pastors get up there, they should be um, kneeling down for prayer. And I also state that when we do it in the home, we should be kneeling down uh, for prayer. Because I also talked about the different um, people that worship idols. What do they do? They go and most, most some of them, what they take off their shoes at the, before they go into the sanctuary. And what do they do? They completely bow down. And so that is in reference. So if they can do it to an idol for, I should say for an idol, what do you think about us as Christian? Shouldn't we be doing that with the with the Creator, with the Most High, the one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that created you and I? And so I was going to read uh, um, irreverence, irreverence, but then I came to this particular one because in here it also talks about the time of trouble, right? So. I said, well, let me go to this part. So let me go here. I kind of, okay, it says here, The Time of Trouble. And this is one of my other favorite books. And this is by Ellen G. White. Guys, can you guys see that? Okay. And this is, for those of you that might have this book, We Are in Spiritual Gifts. And this is the early writings by Ellen G. White, like I just stated. And this is on the part of Spiritual Gift. And this is in this book here. It's on page... 282 and a state here let me get my markers out of this one let me drink some water just in case i need water okay so it state here time of trouble father god as i cover this topic father god i ask you that you will open our hearts and our mind to receive this information i thank you in jesus name amen and amen and a state here time of trouble I saw saints leaving the cities and, vill and villages, associating together in companies and living in the most solitary places. Angels provided them food and water while the wicked were suffering from hunger and thirst. Then I saw the leading men of the earth counseling together and Satan and his angels busy around them. I saw a writing, copies of which were scattered in different parts of the land giving orders that unless the saint should yield their peculiar fate, give up the Sabbath, and observe the first day of the week. What day is that? That is Sunday. The people were at liberty after a certain time to put them to death. And that's where we are headed. Everything is leading for the final battle of earth history, my sister and brother. What's going on in Jamaica with the currency being changed? And it's just a matter of time. It would all happen throughout the whole world, going into that one world order. 
And it's all about uh, whether you're going to serve God on the day that he decided that he gave us, or you're going to do what men say and choose the first day of the week. And that's where we are headed. Satan wants allegiance, my sister and brother, and he does not like you. He does not like me. And so he's doing everything in his power to destroy um, Christians, to destroy individuals that loves the Lord. But then you know what? It doesn't matter, though. Even though you're serving him, I should not even go. I'm not even going to go there. Let me finish my topic here because I'm going, I'm going all the way there. So let me go back here. I stayed here. Should I go back there? No, let me go back here. It says, but in this hour of trials, the saints were calm and composed, trusting in God and leaning upon his promise that a way of escape would be made for them. In some places, before the time for the decree to be executed, the wicked rushed upon the saint to slay them. But angels in the form of men of war fought for them. Satan wishes to have the privilege of destroying the saints of the Most High. You hear what I just said? Satan, and this is what I was trying to say, but that's why I said stop because I remember I was going to cover it later. Satan wishes to have the privilege of destroying the saints of the Most High, but Jesus bid his angels watch over them. God would be honored by making a covenant with those who have kept his law in the sight of the heathen around about them. And Jesus will be honored by translating without their seeing death. The faithful, wait, waiting ones who have so long expected him. Soon I saw the saint suffering great mental anguish. Hey, my brother, how are you? It was good talking to you the other day. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're doing well. So he says, soon I saw the saints suffering great mental anguish. They seem to be surrounded by the wicked inhabitants of the earth. Every appearance was against them. Some began to fear that God had left them to perish by the hands of the wicked. But if their eyes could have, could have been open, they would have been... Let me go back. But if their eyes could have been opened, they would have seen themselves surrounded by angels of God. Next came the multitude of the angry wicked, and the next a mass of evil angels hurrying on the wicked to slay the saint. But before they could approach God's people, the wicked must first past this company of mighty holy angels. This was impossible. The angels of God were causing them to receive, meaning retreat, to go back, and also caused the evil angels who were pressing around them to fall back. It was an hour of fearful, terrible anguish to the saint. Day and night they cried unto God for deliverance. To outward appearance, there was no possibility of their escape. The wicked had already begun to try on crying out. Why wouldn't you, no, why doesn't your God deliver you out of our hands? Why don't you go up and save your life? But the saint heeded them not. Like Jacob, they were wrestling with God. The angels longed to deliver them, but they must wait a little longer. And the people of God must drink of the cup and be baptized with the baptism. The angels, faithful to their trust, continued their watch. God could not suffer his name to be reproached amongst the heathen. The time had nearly come when he was to manifest his mighty power and gloriously deliver his saint. For his name, glory, he would deliver every one of those who have patiently 
waited for him whose name were written in the book. And it goes on and on, but I will stop there. No, let me finish. Let me finish. Because then the other part is deliverance of the saints. Let me hear it. Let me finish it. It stayed here. I was pointed back to faithful Noah. When the rain descended and the flood came, Noah and his family has been entered the ark, and God had shut them in. Noah has faithfully warned the inhabitants of the antediluvian world while they had mocked and derided him. And as the water descended upon the earth and one after another was drowned, they beheld the ark of which they had made so much sport, riding safely upon the wave, preserving the faithful Noah and his family. So I saw that the people of God who had faithfully warned the world of his coming wrath would be delivered. God could not suffer the wicked to, dis to destroy those who were expecting translation and who could not bow to the decree of the beast and receive his mark. I saw that if the wicked were permitted to slay the saints, Satan and all his evil hosts and all who hate God would be gratified. And oh, what a triumph it would be for his satanic majesty to have power in the last closing struggle over those who have so long waited to behold him whom they love. Those who have mocked at the idea of the saint going up will witness the care of God for his people and behold their glorious deliverance. And the saint left the city and the villages. They were pursued by the wicked who sought to slay them. But the sword that was raised to kill God's people broke and fell as powerless as a straw. Angels of God shielded the saints. And they cried day and night for deliverance. They cried, came up before the Lord. Mm. So I would conclude there. And this is under spiritual, in the book, like I state, the early writings by Ellen G. White. This is under spiritual gifts. And this is the time of trouble, in the time of trouble. And this is where we are headed my sister my brother and so i'll stop here and the next part would be deliverance of the saint and it goes on so this is another book that you can probably go to um amazon and purchase as well my sister my brother this one here early writings and let me show you it starts here the christian experience and then it goes into the spiritual gift. That's the fall of Satan, fall of man, the plan of salvation, the first advent of Jesus, meaning when he first came. And then they got the uh, Reformation, the church and the world unite. And they got William Miller. And it goes on uh, spiritualism. And it goes all the way down to the deliverance of the saint. That's what I just talked about. That was the next part that that. Uh, she covers then the saint rewards the art desolate so it tells you from the from the point of the world how it came about all the way to the second coming and the se the second resurrection because you don't want to be in the first you want to be in the first you don't want to be in the second resurrection because the second resurrection those will be the individual that will receive like satan they will see their just reward, and that will be, they will be burned up, completely burned up. So they will not be burning forever and ever. That's false teaching. That's a false teaching. They will be burned up. Like, like if I put a log in my fireplace, and the log, the, the fire would burn completely up. It burns to ashes, and that's what will take place. So hell is an event. It is not a place. Hell is an event. It is not a place. Okay, so Jesus will come back and destroy this 
earth. And the last uh, part he will destroy will be man, and he will burn them up to create this new world. Okay, my sister and brother, so let us remain faithful until the end. So get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming soon. So regardless of what's going on in the world, my sister and brother, you should, you should still have joy and peace because as Christians, and especially as Seventh-day Adventist believers, you know uh, the end, the beginning of the story, and you know the end of the story. Christians, you know the beginning of the story and you know the ending of the story and from genesis to revelation the plan of redemption state that jesus wins in the end my sister and brother so hold on hold on my sister and brother i know stuff is seemed to be very how would you say very um crisis is raging and will forever rage because everything has to come to a climax. Satan has this sin has to play completely out. And then Jesus will stand up and say, it is finished. It is finished, my sister and brother. So just make sure, my sister and brother, that you are studying the word of God for yourself. You go to church, still go in there and you take your notes and come back and study that information that whomever, whether it's your pastor, whomever comes in and give you information, don't take anybody's word for it, just like myself. Don't take my word. Study, study for yourself because you have to know beyond of a shadow of doubt why you believe what you believe and why do you love him so much. you got to know, my sister and brother, because you got to stand on the promises of God. You have to stand on the word of God. You have to. That's the only way you're going to be able to make it. Okay, so let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. I th thank you, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself, Father God. I give you the praise, give you the honor, give you the glory, Father God. So, Father God, we know there's many people, Father God, that's sick right now, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to go and visit them in the sick room, Father God. If someone is going through financial issue, Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you have already provided a solution, Father God. Someone is going through so much, Father God. There's so much going on on this planet. Out. So, Father God, we ask you to intervene on my sisters and my brother's behalf, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for you are God, that you sit high, you look low, Father God, and you ask us to continue to pray to you, to surrender our lives to you. So, Father God, if we have said or done anything today, Father God, that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you will wash us. Wash us and make us whiter than snow. And once you have cleansed us, Father God, we give you permission, Father God, to take these empty vessels, Father God, use it, Father God, to give you the glory, the honor, and praise that we need to do for you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for creating us. We thank you that you sent your son to die on Calvary's cross for us. We thank you, Father God, for giving us another day to get our lives in order. So, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. And we thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so thank you so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing for you, can you go ahead and just share, share, share? And you can follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. And I have a wealth of information there. I have over 1,400 um, different videos there. And you can go there and then just share the information, my sister and brother. It is kids friendly, so you don't have to tell your son, your, your child is like, oh, cover your face, cover and um. um uh, cover your ears. You don't have to do that, my sister and brother. Okay? It is kids friendly. And they too need to make a decision for life or for death. They too have to make that decision, my sister and brother. And they're never too young for that information, my sister and brother. When you hear the truth, he said that the truth will make you free or should, will set you free. So we want the truth of what God wants us to do, right? And the only way we're going to get that, we have to study the word. We have to study the word for, my, for yourself. And I hope and pray, my sister, brother, that you are sharing um, the scripture with your children. It's important that they know what they need to know. Because when you are not able to go to the neighbors and, and spread the gospel, your child will be able to do that. Okay? So that's why we need to train our children in the right way grandchildren 
they will be the one to lead out because they it is it would be easier for someone to open the door for them than for us there will be easier for someone to hear from a child sometime than from us as grown people they decide i don't want to hear what she has to say but when a child says it then it's like mm, now it makes sense so god is using everyone if you allow him to he will use your children your grandchildren to finish the work that we as grown people that we have not done ourselves so my sister and brother remain faithful until the end and um so let's just do the four uh hugs for survival the four 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 so here we go here we go one two three one more four thank you my sister and brother thank you i love you appreciate you so have a happy sabbath happy sabbath and you could do um go to my uncle google google who changed the sabbath from saturday to sundown from from saturday to sunday and that will be the system that satan is using and it's a man it's a system that this man is over that he is using to satan is using him to do his bidding my sister and brother so God has children in all these different churches and he's calling them out of this false system. And Revelation 14, verses 6, it talks about Babylon. Babylon is, for, uh, is falling. Um, 7, 8, 9, just read it all the way to 12. It's a false system and God is calling his children out of those false systems to come under his banner. I'm not talking about not denomination. I'm talking about the banner of Jesus Christ, okay? And God says, if you love me, if you love me, he stated, keep my commandments. And the commandments, my sister and brother, all of his commandments, okay? So I love you and have a happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. It's some palaces, it's already the Sabbath. So happy Sabbath, my sister and brother. I love you, love you, love you. Until, um, until Monday, be blessed and take care. Love you, take care.